This section introduces you to a new notation for the antiderivative um, called an indefinite integral. And it also, the section is about some, the big 13, I call them, the 13 antiderivatives that you pretty much just need to know. So here's the new notation. The new notation for an is an indefinite integral. It looks exactly like an integral. The only difference is that you're not going to have limits of integration. So you won't have any numbers on the top or bottom. And your answer when you have an indefinite integral is the whole family of functions that have that function, the integrand, as a derivative. So it's a way of asking for the antiderivative. Um, it will have a plus c in it. So if you're asked for um, an indefinite integral, your answer should always have a plus c on it. So when you see that indefinite integral sign, it's no longer asking you for area. It's really just asking you for the antiderivative function of lowercase f or the whole family of functions because it will have a plus c on it. So some, um, I call these the big 13 antiderivative rules, but I'm going to call this one one half. I'm not going to count it as one of the big 13. If you have a constant and you take the antiderivative of a constant, you get k times x. So this is kind of the reason I'm not counting this as a big antiderivative is if, if I tell you that your function has a slope of one half, you can say, oh, then it's going to be one half x plus b. Um, so this is kind of a pre-algebra kind of antiderivative. Um, this is the first um, big third of the big 13. If you have x to the n, as long as n is not negative 1, so like this works if you have x squared, or it works if you have x to the 1 half, or x to the negative 2, it just doesn't work for x equals negative 1, then you add 1 to your exponent and you divide by that number. Um, it makes sense because when you're doing derivatives, you bring down the exponent and you subtract 1 from the exponent. So when you do the antiderivative, you're doing the opposite of that. Also, I want you to notice why it doesn't work for n equals negative 1. You would be dividing by 0, and that's no fun. So this does not work if n is equal to negative 1. So here is the rule you use if n is equal to negative 1. Another way of thinking about that is your function is 1 over x. The antiderivative for 1 over x is the natural log of x, but we're, the reason we put absolute value bars around there is natural log cannot include negative numbers. So we need to put absolute value bars around it to make sure that we're not um, violating the domain of natural log. So here are a couple of examples. I'm trying to find the antiderivative of x squared. So that would be x to the third over 3 plus c. I just add 1 to the exponent and then add c. Um, for the second one, before I do an antiderivative, I'm going to rewrite it so that it looks like x to the n. And now when I do my antiderivative, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and then divide and I would probably rewrite that as 2 times the square root of x plus c to make it a little extra fancy. So again, being comfortable with fractional exponents and being comfortable with negative exponents is important. Um, x to the negative 1, well, we can't use that um, exponent rule, so let's rewrite it as 1 over x dx, and then that would be natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Sometimes I have students who then say, well, I'll just say that this is natural log of x squared plus c, and that is not true. If n is not negative 1, then you use this rule. So you're going to add 1 and divide, 
And so maybe rewrite that as your answer is negative 1 over x plus c. So don't use natural log unless your exponent is a negative 1. Do not use natural log for an exponent of negative 2. All right, moving on. Here are several more of the big 13. So first of all, the antiderivative of e to the x. I hope this is not a surprise. It's e to the x plus c. Um, if you're working backwards, the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine of x plus c. You can always check these out by taking a derivative of the answer. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative negative sine. And the derivative of c is 0, so we would get sine of x. Um, I hope you're kind of getting that if you've memorized your derivatives, the antiderivatives should be fairly straightforward. If you haven't, this is the time to do so. And this video is a little bit dull because I'm really just telling you to memorize these antiderivatives. So the integral of cosine of x is sine of x. If I take a derivative of sine, I get cosine. Um, and then Again, this is one where if you know your antiderivatives, I mean, if you know your derivatives going forward, it's easier to go backwards. The derivative that gives you secant squared is tangent of x plus c. Um, and the one that gives you a derivative of secant x tangent x is secant of x. Going forward with all the rest of the trig derivatives, we have cosecant squared. Well, that looks a lot like secant squared, but it's co, so this would be um, negative cotangent of x plus c. And the integral of cosecant x cotangent x is negative cosecant x plus c. And now we're on to the um, inverse trig derivatives. And the good news is you don't have to worry about the cos with the inverse trig derivatives because um, inverse trig would just be a shift. So the plus c kind of takes care of the cos for you. So this is sine inverse. This one, I hope you recognize, is tangent inverse of x plus c. And this weird, ugly one is secant inverse of x plus c. And that's the big 12, so there must be one more. The big 13, this is the one that most people forget most of the time. Going forward, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x times natural log of a. So when we go backward, the antiderivative is a to the x divided by natural log of a plus c. Um, here are some examples to try. Um, they're kind of mixing up all the different types. Um, so I'm going to rewrite this one with negative exponents. So that would be a negative 2. But I'm going to leave that as 1 over x. And I'm going to leave this as 1 over 1 plus x squared as well. So then when I take the antiderivative, I would add 1 to the exponent. And this is the one where x is negative 1. So that's natural log of the absolute value of x. And this is tangent inverse of x. I only need to have 1 plus c. Um, and then I can rewrite this a little bit. Oops. Negative 1 over x plus natural log of the absolute value of x plus tangent inverse of x plus c. All right, this next one, 5 to the x. So the antiderivative of that would be 5 to the x divided by natural log of 5. I can have a constant in front of these antiderivatives. It doesn't change anything. It just makes it, the constant would just be out in front. So the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Put the 2 out in front. The antiderivative of 3 would be 3x and then plus c. Remember, you can always check these answers by taking a derivative. The derivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x times natural log of 5. And so that's why that cancels with the divided by natural log of 5. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of 3x is 3, and so on. So that's how you can check your answers to make sure you're right. 
All right, so that is this new notation of the indefinite integral and how to find some indefinite integrals. Thank you so much.